My people, hope we're doing well. Uh, this is, uh, we're going to do a video on the surface area of revolution. Uh, now, it's related to the arc length, okay? Uh, and the reason is, is that what we're going to be doing is for each one of those, uh, for each one of those subdivisions, we're going to be taking those infinitesimally uh, short secant line uh, segments and we're going to be revolving them in order to create a surface. So if you have, you know, a graph something like this, uh, and you're going from, you know, x is equal to a to uh, x is equal to b, but you have, you know, this uh, this subinterval right here. In order to get surface area, you're going to need to, remember we always go by means of approximation, you're gonna take this right here and you're going to revolve it around the axis, okay? And what happens is, is you functionally get something, uh, you basically functionally get something like this, okay? It basically is, we're still dealing, like when you revolved it around in order to get a volume, you actually got what looked like uh, small cylinders, and you were interested in the volume of those cylinders. And the the way that you did that when you were dealing with volume of revolution, okay, uh, remember that volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. And so what you had is you had pi uh, from a to b, your r, course was your f of x squared and your h was your d of x okay this right here was my r squared and this was my h uh, and all you have to do in order to remember that is just think about if you were trying to look at the volume of a coin okay like a quarter or something but if I'm dealing with not the volume of revolution but the surface area of revolution I'm not interested in the volume of of the cylinder I'm interested in the air the surface area but not but only of the outside rim right I'm interested in basically that right there I'm not interested in this area or that area I'm not interested in its volume I'm just interested in the outer area the outer surface area of each one of those cylindrical cross sections now but remember cylind cylinders that outer area when you sort of unfurl it is simply just a rectangle, okay? And that rectangle has very specific, has very specific, um, uh, has very specific uh, <sighs> measurements, right? Uh, parameters. Uh, but we know that the surface area of, uh, of a, surface area of a cylinder is pi, um, is basically, sorry, the area of this rectangle is going to be, um, length times width, okay? And the length right here is actually the circumference of the circle. Remember that it came from, it came from being, you know, curled up like this, right? And so that right there is the circumference and that circumference becomes that long edge right there. And so what happens is you're going to get two pi r as your length and your width is going to be this. Well, remember, that's where it lined up with this secant line right here. So it's 2 pi r, and that width is your arc length. Not the width of a subinterval, the arc length. Because remember, the arc length, although it is really, really close, is still a little bit different. And so it's 2 pi r times arc length. Now, what that does is it gives us 2 pi, because of course, that's a constant and it can sit out in front from A to B. The R is still our F of X and our arc length is still one plus F prime of X squared DX, okay? So basically what we have here is uh, we have two pi from A to B F of X and I'm gonna just, I'm just rewriting it because it's a little bit bigger and probably a little bit clearer over here, dx or 2 pi from a to b of y, 1 plus dy dx 
squared dx. Okay, either way, it doesn't really matter. But all the while, this piece right here, or this piece right here, is the arc length from the last section. This is the arc length from the last section. And so uh, you can see why these come back to back and why actually other, like some other books actually put them into the same section and don't actually divide them out. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and do some examples. We have y is equal to x cubed, and we all know what that looks like. Um, and of course, we're dealing with the portion in the first quadrant that goes to the point 1, 1 and goes to the point 2, 8. So what we, and man, that's really steep to go around the x-axis, but hey, there we go. Uh, let's, let's draw it a little, let's draw it just a little, um, a little stretched out, okay? So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then we have 1 and 2. So 1, 1 and uh, 2, 8. And so remember, it kind of does this number, right? And we are interested in this function from 1 to 2. And we want the surface area as it, it goes around the x-axis. All righty. Well, let's go ahead and get our dy dx. That's going to be uh, 3x squared. And then dy dx squared is going to be 9x to the fourth. All righty. Well, this shouldn't be too tough. We know that the surface area is 2 pi from a to b y times 1 plus dy dx squared uh, dx. Or in this case, 2 pi from 1 to 2, since we're going with respect to x, we're using the uh, x coordinates as our limits of integration, y square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx. Now, ugly, eh, not really. Uh, fun, probably not. But you should recognize the fact that this right here, this x cubed, is one degree lower than this 9x to the fourth. And therefore, a simple u sub uh, will actually do the trick here. And we simply are going to need 36x cubed. And so if that's the case, okay, if that is our u sub, then what we're going to need is we're going to need to plop a 36 down inside of this integrand and divide by 36 outside. And we're going to get u to the 1 half du. Well, then you need to change the limits of integration. Okay, well, when x is 1, u is 10. And when x is 2, gosh, that's ugly, uh, u is 145. All right, not, like I said, not fun, but doable. And so we get pi over 18. Uh, and that becomes u to the 3 halves over 3 halves, or times 2 thirds. Uh, u to the 3 halves from 10 to 145. This, of course, winds up simplifying into pi over 27. And I simply have to use my calculator to uh, find the decimal approximation for 145 to the 3 halves minus 10 to the 3 halves. And what you'll find is that it approximates to 199.480. So that shouldn't be uh, too far afield, right? It should be should be pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, let's go ahead and do one that's you know not polynomial, so probably a little probably a little more a uh, little bit more to do. Now, if we remember what this looks like, uh, this is a radical function shifted to the left one and uh, moved up two units. Okay, so what we have here is three, four. And so it starts here, 
and it goes uh, three to four. So, oh, sorry, it goes right there, right? And it goes, keeps going. But what we're interested in is, so just ignore that. What we're interested in is the zero to three. So this point to this point, we want the length of this arc right here, okay? Uh, and we want it with, res and we're gonna find it with respect to uh, X. So this is one, two, and three. Alrighty, well that was fun. Let's go ahead and remember that Y, uh, that two root X plus one is two X plus one to the one half, which gives me DY DX is equal to X plus one to the negative one half. Because when I bring the one half down, it's gonna cancel with the two, subtract one. And so basically what happens is this winds up being one over radical x plus one. Well, dy dx squared is simply gonna be one over x plus one. Alrighty, well that's fun. Let's go ahead and plop it down into our uh, integration formula. We have two pi, and that's gonna go from zero to three Remember, it's 2 pi r. Well, r is, of course, the function itself. And so we get 2 uh, root x plus 1. And then, of course, the arc length, which is 1 plus 1 over x plus 1 dx. Now, this simplifies actually rather nicely. Uh, and what happens here is this becomes x plus 1. And when I actually get a common denominator underneath here and actually simplify, it's going to be x plus plus two over x plus one dx. Well, I got news for you. This and that are going to cancel. Yay! And so we're gonna get four pi zero to three of x plus two to the one half dx. And then we simply need to integrate the way that we always do. So four pi, this is gonna be x plus two to the three halves over three halves, or of course times two thirds and we get x plus two to the three halves. Uh, we're gonna evaluate from zero to three, uh, but we can go ahead and think of that as eight pi over three if we want. So eight pi over three. We're gonna plug in three, and this is gonna wind up being five to the three halves minus plug in zero. We're gonna get two to the three halves. Uh, and while that's an irrational number, uh, it's easily plugged into your calculator, and it's 69.969. Okie dokie. Now, uh, let's go ahead and do another. Uh, and this one's kind of fun because, you know, exponential. So we have uh, dy dx. And remember, this is 1 plus e to the x to the 1 half it's going to wind up being um, it's going to wind up being one half one plus e to the x to the negative one half one half one plus e to the x to the negative one half times of course the derivative of the inside which is e to the x this is going to wind up being e to the x over two one plus e to the x uh, and when i square it dy dx squared I'm going to get e to the 2x over 4, 1 plus e to the x. Yay. All right, let's go ahead and um, plug it into our little formula. Uh, we have 2 pi from 0 to 1. And then, of course, y. So we have 1 plus e to the x. And then our arc length, which is one plus this quantity. So e to the two x over four, one plus e to the x dx. Now this, of course, right here can simplify. We're gonna get a common denominator underneath the radical. Now when we do that, we're gonna have a four and a four e to the x in the numerator, which is actually going to create a quasi quadratic in the numerator, uh, and what we're going to get is two pi, zero, one. This uh, is still the y. Remember this right here is the arc length, right? This right here is the y. 
uh, what happens here is it winds up being e to the 2x plus 4e to the x plus 4, which winds up being e to the x plus 2 squared over 4 times e to the x plus 1, or 1 plus e to the x, it doesn't really matter. Well, here's the thing. Everything that is not a perfect square is going to cancel. Yay! Because this is going to cancel with this. Both what's left inside that radical are both squares. This is going to pop out as a 1 half and cancel with this 2 out in front, simply leaving pi. And what I'm going to be left with is the square root of e to the x plus 2 squared, or e to the x plus 2 dx. And while that looked really, really messy, it cleaned up awfully nicely. And so we have pi, and we have e to the x uh, plus 2x from 0 to 1. And we have pi, um, uh, e to the first plus 2 times 1 minus e to the 0 uh, plus 2 times 0. This is e plus 2 minus 1, or e plus 1. So pi e plus 1. Now, that's kind of nice and neat and tidy, and it actually winds up, when you plug it into your calculator, being 11.681. Okay. Now, none of this should really come as a surprise, okay? Um, but, uh, of course, now, when we're doing one like this, and we're asked to do it around the y-axis, you need to be careful because when we were dealing with arc length, arc length done with respect to the x-axis and arc length done with respect to the y-axis, as long as it's between the same two points, is going to be the same length. But when you start revolving it around a different axis, those are not interchangeable anymore. And so basically we can't, you know, can't do it around the x-axis and around the y-axis and go, hey, look, same answer because it's not going to be the same answer, right? What we need to do is we need to take this and we need to solve it uh, for x, and we're going to get x is equal to y cubed over 8. So this is this equation, x in terms of y, instead of y in terms of x. Well, that means my dx dy is going to be 3 eighths y squared. And my dx dy squared is going to be 9 64ths y to the fourth. Now, not fun, but let's go ahead and plug it all in. So we have 2 pi, and since we're dealing it, we're spinning it around the y axis, and everything is going to be with respect to y, we're going to be dealing with a limits of integration from 2 to 4, our y coordinates of those order pairs. Remember that it's 2 pi r. r, of course, here is going to be x, or 1 eighth y cubed. And then the square root of uh, 1 plus uh, 9 over 64 y to the fourth dy. Now again, this radical, I didn't pre-simplify it, though I could have sort of played with it a little bit and gotten it into a nice, neat uh, little form beforehand. Uh, but what happens here is this winds up, because the y to the fourth is in the numerator. So the only thing that you need here in order to get a common denominator is 64 over 64, right? Uh, and if basically you then can combine them into the same fraction, you have a denominator of 64 that you can then pull out as a 1 eighth that 1 eighth will combine with this 1 eighth to be 1 over 64. It'll combine with this 2 pi to be pi over 32 from 2 to 4. y cubed, and I have the square root of 64 plus 9 y to the fourth. And this is looking an, awfully, an awful lot like a previous one where I had an x cubed and a 9 x to the fourth underneath the radicand. It's going to be a simple u sub. So u is equal to 9y to the 4th plus 64. My du is going to be 36y cubed dy. OK, well, all that means is I need to divide by 32 out here. So I'm going to have pi over 32 
times 36. I'm going to go ahead and save you the suspense. That winds up being 1152. Uh, and of course, I'm going to deal with my limits of integration here in just a moment. This winds up being u to the one half du. Now, <laughs> the limits of integration get kind of nasty because when you plug 2 into here, that's 9 times 16 plus 64. And 9 times 16 plus 64 winds up being 208. Yes, ugly limit of integration. Uh, thankfully, I mean, but this is going to become, you know, u to the 3 halves over 3 halves. And so you're going to plug it in just as easily into your calculator as you did one of the past ones. This is 2,368. Uh, and so we get pi over 1152 times 2 thirds, uh, right? Because basically this is going to wind up, uh, yeah, basically the, the denominator is going to get a little bit larger because this is going to cancel with the 2 inside of there. And I'll simplify it here in just a second. Uh, times u to the 3 halves, that's going to simplify, uh, from 208 to 2368. And that winds up being pi over 1728, uh, 2,368 to the 3 halves minus 208 uh, to the 3 halves. Uh, and that winds up being 204.044. OK, ugly, yes, OK. But here's the thing. Uh, we can actually use our calculator the same way we did before. We just have to do a little bit of tweaking, right? Um, and actually, um, I think we'll discuss that in class on Wednesday. Uh, and I'll have a handout as well. I've already, I've already made the handout. But, uh, but basically, um, what you're going to have here on the main screen is you're just going to have this same thing, right? But you're going to have 2 pi out in front, and you're going to have a y1 joining the, radic the radical in the integrant. Okay, uh, and we'll talk about how to how to use the uh, how to use the uh, calculator uh, in order to aid us in this uh, when we get together on Wednesday. But uh, as always, if you have any questions, please do shoot me an email. Bye.